Hi, I'm Celeste, and this is 10 Minutes of History from the Balboa Island Museum. Today I'm sitting in our cubby that has our surf um, history in it. We also have an exhibit on the Newport Beach lifeguards. We have an exhibit on the Wedge. We have an exhibit on the 1928 Pacific Coast War Championship. And the main one I'm going to talk to you about today is um, Duke Kahanamoku, and also Gidget, which we have uh, running on one of our monitors in here. Um, these two people, Duke and Gidget, actually, Gidget is actually Kathy Conner, were huge surf influencers in, um, in the time that they were surfing in Southern California. And today we have influencers on YouTube and, um, that, that use their influence to, to make new things happen in the world. And these people are very commonly found, especially at the turn of the century, um, 1999 when they put out all of the, the lists of the century, who were the biggest influencers or the most important surfers. Not necessarily the best surfers because Kathy wouldn't be considered one of the best surfers, but she influenced surfing so much that she's always in the top 10 of those lists and I'm gonna tell you why. So first we start with Duke. He's born in 1890 in Honolulu and this is a time where there are some people surfing, but not a lot of people are surfing because the sport of kings from the past has been squelched by the missionaries that came in and didn't feel that was an appropriate thing, especially for women. So there was always a handful of people surfing, but not to the degree that they were surfing prior to the missionaries' arrival. And so Duke and his brothers, who are on that beach in Honolulu, have... Um, they're kind of famous there for their surfing exploits and they, um, they, the early people that start vacationing in Honolulu see this. Duke becomes a very accomplished swimmer. He's a very strong swimmer and he actually goes to four Olympics and in those four Olympics he wins five Olympic medals. He uses that fame as a swimmer to travel the world of course and do surfing exhibitions, starting in New Zealand and Australia. He goes to the East Coast, comes to the West Coast. And he's, he's famous for this very tall, straight back surfing style that he has. And also, they said it's not uncommon for him to come into the shore um, standing on his head on the surfboard. So he's, he's famous worldwide for showing people that this sport, this sport is gonna come back. Um, he is, um, um, comes to California and he's a very strong surfing presence here in the 20s and 30s. In fact, in Newport Beach, Corona Del Mar Beach, he's um, down there, he's got like a club of surfers that are at the Corona Del Mar Beach. And he's also helping with the, uh, the new life saving core out there. And in 1925, he became comes completely famous in Newport because there is a boating accident um, coming into the harbor and a boat overturns and um, everyone ends up in the water and he is just coming out of his hut which he has on Big Corona Beach and he's got his guys with him and along with um, Drea, the, the person in charge of the life saving, saving corps, they all paddle out there and Duke himself saves seven of the um, people that were on the boat from drowning. So there were people that did drown in that accident, but he was able to, to make several trips back and forth with his board. This brings in, with life saving, the fact that you should take something with you when you go to rescue someone, because prior to that, they were basically in dories. And they actually give him credit for that, that buoy, like you see it on Baywatch when they're always carrying that buoy, because that was a, a smaller form of a paddleboard, that you had something with you to, to help that person back to shore with, which would have been a paddleboard if you were on a open beach. So we give him credit for that. Um, let's see. He gets his name. He, uh, he's named after his father. Um, his father was named after the Duke of Edinburgh who had visited Hawaii. And so um, that's why he has his name Duke. His, his family didn't call him Duke. They, they called him by his middle name. But um, he ends up later becoming a um, more of a businessman. He has investments in the beginning of the Aloha shirt in Honolulu. He, and he is starts this restaurant chain called Duke's, which we still have today. And that's where Don Ho sang in, in Honolulu. And um, he becomes 
famous from his exploits here, and so he's in now in the movie business too, and he meets John Wayne, and uh, we have a picture of him up here in a movie with John Wayne, um, and I think that's a fun association. John Wayne gets his name Duke, because uh, even though he's born in Iowa, he ends up living in Glendale, California, and as he walks by this fire station every day to get to school with his dog Duke, who's Big Duke, the fireman there nicknamed John Wayne Little Duke because he's along with his dog. So uh, I think that's cute that they're both associated and they're both their name is both Duke. So that brings us to Gidget. So Gidget, um, her story is very interesting. Um, this book was written by her father in 1957. Um, in 1956, her family has moved back to California from Europe. Her father is Czechoslovakian. He and, and his wife and first daughter lived in Austria. He was a screenwriter, but he wasn't getting screen credit because of the Nazis um, not wanting uh, that, that to happen and, of course, the tensions. And so his family escapes to uh, California from the Nazis pre-war. Then they move back after the war to Berlin. And so when Kathy's about 15, they come back and they live in Brentwood. She, um, her, she doesn't really love the beach. It's her mom who loved the beach. And there were some boys on their street that surfed and the mom would give them a ride down there. And the mom liked to hang out there. So that's where Kathy got this association with <laughs> Malibu Beach, <laughs> which was Surf Rider Beach um, in Malibu. She um, kept a diary where she wrote down everything. That, that was happening at that time. And her dad, she, she told her dad, I think I'm gonna write a book about this. And he said, well, why don't I write the book about it? So, um, being that she was 15, so he writes the book about it. The way this becomes such an influencing thing on our society is the language in the book. Um, if you're like me and every other signature in your yearbook says, have a bitch in summer, that's Gidget. Gidget has that on almost every page of this book, something's bitching. Also, if, she, if you say something is the absolute ultimate, or uh, if you were chopped somebody down, I don't know if you remember that from the early days when you chopped somebody, when you were insulting somebody, you chopped them down. And then all throughout, she calls her dad old man and her mom old lady. And so he, this was the first time they really wrote this stuff down. So he writes this book in six weeks and it becomes a really popular book. So in 1959, they make the first movie. Now, when he writes this book um, of his very brunette daughter, um, in the book, she is described as blonde. So of course, they cast Sandra D, who's little. Gidget is small, her name means girl, and um, the midget part is, is um, associated to her very small stature. She's just under five feet. So um, her name means girl midget. So. When um, they cast Sandra D in this movie, if, um, this is like one of her first roles and she becomes very popular from that too. Now, you have to remember, this is the really first surf movie with a plot. There are movies because she re references going to watch surf films and this is pretty well documented as well. There are surf films out there with people who traveled and took their cameras and took pictures at the beach, but they're not, there's no plot to this movie. So this is before uh, Frankie and Annette. This is before Dick Dale. Dick Dale's singing country music at this time. This is before the Beach Boys. This is before any of this beach culture. So in all these beginning um, Gidget movies, the music is not surf music, it's Hawaiian music or bongo music. So that's why there's, there's such an influence on our society. Once Gidget came out, and I don't know if you remember, it's not in the book, but in the first movie with Sandra D. She, um, she has tonsillitis, and so she learns to surf on her bed. She gets the surfboard, puts the surfboard, she, which she bought for $35, which is a lot of money in 1956. Um, she puts it on her bed, and, and she has her friends wiggle the bed, and so she's learning to surf on top of her bed. Well, if you were in the Midwest and you saw that, you would say, hey, I can do that. And that's exactly what happened. Surf, the popularity of surfing, especially for girls, because these boards were fairly heavy and you didn't have a lot of girls surfing prior to that. This just took off. And so that's why we consider her such an influence on the sport, because once girls saw this or kids across the country saw this and she could do it, they felt that everyone could do it. 
Um, back to the connection. She does talk about Duke in her book. It's someone she admired, especially this straight um, stature on the surfboard because at that time they were, they were surfing very standing straight up with either two feet parallel on the back of the board or doing a hang ten on the front of the board, but very little in that center of the board. You know, you have these, these very long boards and um, she admired that stature and she, she talks about always how tall everyone is. Of course, she was very short, so I'm sure everybody looked tall. Also, um, there was a, a lot of tandem riding, which they still do up at Surf Rider Beach. So that trick riding, most of these boys, and many of these boys that she was originally surfing with, she was not the first girl at Surf Rider Beach. There had been years before about four or five girls who were pretty famous there, but they had gone by that time, probably off to college. And so when she got to Surf Rider Beach, she was really the only girl there at that time. Um, she goes on to, um, um, that still still lives in Southern California. Duke, while well, he, he died when he was 77 years old, Kathy Koner is still alive today. And her last association with Duke is that she works as the ambassador of Lo Aloha, she said she's a hostess, at um, Duke's restaurant in Malibu. And so they kind of come full circle with their association there. So um, that's about it. I think. Um, Maybe next time I'll talk to you about this surf contest in 1928. So thanks for listening. Bye-bye.